So when you watch a pro player like Klix, you'll notice that their gameplay looks very responsive and this is because their input delay is extremely low. Now there's many obvious factors that do contribute to them getting low input delay, such as having a top spec gaming PC, having the best gaming peripherals and also having optimised settings both in game as well as inside of the Windows operating system. But there's also a few other factors that are overlooked that also help pros get the lowest amount of input delay and in this video today I'm going to explain what they are. So if it does help out, feel free to drop a like on the video, drop a sub on the channel and use my code in the item shop if you do fancy the brand new battle pass or any of the skins in the item shop. But getting straight back to the video, the first method is USB ports. It's really important that you make sure that all your inputs, so your mouse, your keyboard or your controller are plugged in correctly. To find this out, you want to head over to Google and you want to type in USB tree viewer and this right here is a 100% free and safe to use program that will find out this information. Just click the top one right here and at the top you'll see a download button, just click that then make sure you actually select one that's right for your PC and mine is the X64 one. It should be the same for most of you out there. You'll then need to obviously download it and extract it and you'll see the application in itself right here. Just open it up. Then inside of the application you'll see it's got a ton of different USB controller hubs. Now there's a few different ones but the main one we're concerned with is the USB root hub which is the main hub that's on the back of your PC. That's the one that's connected to the CPU and that's where you want to put all the devices that are latency sensitive such as your mouse, your keyboard or your controller. You can see here I've got my Logitech uh, G Pro wireless mouse plugged in as well as my Wooten One keyboard. However for all the other devices that aren't USB sensitive such as all these right here I've got them plugged wherever I want really. So it could be in the other hubs such as the one that's on the front of the PC or any other additional ones you have it doesn't matter. But make sure that both the mouse, keyboard or controller are all plugged into the first one, the very top one right here, the USB root hub. And also as well a ton of you may be asking should you plug it in specifically into the USB 2.0 which is this one on here or the USB 3.0 which is this one on screen that one's the blue one. Now I've looked into this a bit and I did used to think it mattered but Linus Tech Tips actually did a video on it specifically and posted these results on screen which means that there's not that much of a difference between them it's like pretty much non-existent. However I do believe that for some certain mice out there like the Razer M8K Hertz one I believe you should actually plug that one into the USB 3.0 ports as that's what it tells you to do in the manual so make sure to double check that. You can usually tell if the USB is actually blue that'll probably match with the USB 3.0 port as they look the same. But overall to summarise this point quickly the only major difference between the USB port and the USB 3.0 port is in terms of data transfer speed. You can see here on screen from this graphic the difference between the two is pretty major but it's not so major when it comes to latency as you can see from Linus Text Tip finding. Next we've got the Windows mouse settings and you need to make sure that these are set up correctly for the lowest amount of input delay. To do this go on your desktop, head to the bottom left, you want to right click on the menu, click on settings, then inside of here go into devices and then where it says mouse on the left hand side click that then go to the right hand side where it says additional mouse options and this will open up your mouse properties. Now firstly in the point options you'll see in here there's a total of 11 notches and you want to make sure this is on the default speed of 6 out of 11 which is literally 6 notches along. That's apparently the best one for 100% mouse accuracy and then in addition to that under it you'll see enhanced point of precision and you want to make sure that this is unchecked as what this will do is it will disable mouse acceleration and mouse acceleration is generally regarded as bad for gaming. On top of that as well, if you actually use a wireless mouse that a lot of you actually will, you want to make sure it's set up correctly like this um, picture on screen right here. Most of them come with a little dongle, you want to make sure that that is plugged in and is actually near your mouse, similar to where you'd have the mouse wire itself, like literally right next to it if you can. What you don't want to do is what some people do where they literally just plug the actual adapter straight into the back of their PC and that's bad because the distance from the mouse to the receiver is very very long. Instead you want to use that dongle to actually make the distance between the mouse and the receiver as short as possible which will in turn give you the lowest latency. Next we've got pollen rate. Now pollen rate if you didn't know already is how often your mouse reports back your movements to your computer. So if you are using a higher pollen rate you will have less mouse lag and your movements will be way more precise. You'll basically get far less micro stuttering when using a high pollen rate. And to make sure you're using the highest pollen rate possible you want to 
to go into your mouse software, mine is the Logitech G-Hub software right here for my Logitech mouse, and on the left hand side under where it says Sensitivity DPI, you'll see at the bottom it's got the report rate, it has different names, it's either pollen rate, report rate, it's either one of them, and you'll see here mine actually has a total of 4 options, but yours might have even higher, but a lot of people think it's fine to have a thousand. If you've got a thousand, make sure that that is on. Some mice are capped to 500, like the final mouse for example, but if your mouse can go to a thousand hertz, you definitely want to be on the highest pollen rate possible and make sure it is on a thousand hertz. In addition to that, um, you actually want to make sure that your DPI is set to whatever you want and you actually delete any of the other um, side profiles for the DPI. So you can see for me right here, I'm on 400. Now, I usually do recommend a high DPI like 800 or even 1600 and I explain why in this video on screen. I'll leave a link in the description below. But since I am obviously making videos and stuff, I do keep it on 400 for desktop use and all that. But what you guys want to do is once you've actually selected your exact DPI that you want to use, all these other ones can get deleted. Just go ahead, click on them, click the delete button on your computer and it'll remove all of them. You don't need them on your PC at all. Just make sure you've got your main DPI and that's it. Oh, another thing to mention as well while we are in the mouse software is a thing that I've heard about recently called mouse low power mode. Apparently most wireless mouse, um, especially the Logitech mice, have this thing called low power mode where if the battery actually goes to less than 30%, it'll go into low power mode and that can affect performance slightly. So to stop the mouse from going into low power mode, it's very important that you make sure it's charged at least above 30% to get the maximum performance out of your wireless mouse. I just thought I'd mention that guys so you do get the best performance possible. Next we've got RGB effects. Now for most pro players, you'll notice in their setup they are not using RGB effects. And the reason for why that is, is because they do indeed add a slight input delay. As the well known keyboard company Wooten, which I'm sure most of you have heard of, they found that running an RGB effects slash animation can take a great toll on the MCU. It requires a lot more processing power and it'll delay other processes. Just like when you play a game with extreme graphics while live streaming, your CPU will get overloaded and significantly decrease your frames per second. And they recommend that you better turn off those RGB effects, which you can do in the mouse software. If you go into the Logitech one or whatever you're using, there'll be an option for um, RGB. This is actually under light sync. And if you just go ahead and make sure that it's turned off, you'll see that on your mouse, there's no more RGB. And it's the same thing inside of keyboard software. And there'll be a color option where you can actually go ahead and turn off the F FX or the RGB and just go ahead and turn it off and you'll see on your keyboard the RGB is no longer there. And moving on finally I want to talk about monitor latency. You guys need to make sure you are actually on the highest refresh rate possible as a lot of people think they are but they actually aren't. To find this out most people actually go on their desktop, they right click uh, on it, they go into the Nvidia control panel, they'll go into the display tab under where it says change resolution and then under refresh rate here they'll make sure they've got the highest one selected. But that right there isn't an if you also want to go over to your desktop, you want to right click on it, you want to go under the display settings tab, then if you scroll down in the display section, you want to click on advanced display settings, then finally what you want to do is choose the display you want to actually have the most refresh rate on. I myself have three monitors and the BenQ is my main um, center monitor that I game on, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then under where it says refresh rate right here at the bottom, you want to make sure the highest refresh rate is selected right there guys and you'll be all good to go on that. But that right there guys has been a few overlooked things that Fortnite pros do to get the lowest amount of input delay possible. Hopefully this video helped out, if it did feel free to drop a like on it, drop a sub on the channel and use my code in the item shop to help me out a ton. Catch us all in the next one and be sure to check out these videos on screen. Peace.